welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Russ. Today we're going to be making homemade pizza. As you know, we've already made some bread. We've done some chocolate chip, dark chocolate, milk chocolate, macadamia nut cookies. And you're going to run for this, but this is a celery, carrot, kale, banana, raspberry, strawberry, chia seed, honey, smoothie. And it's, oh, lemon. The lemon actually makes it actually fucking delicious. Mm. Oh my gosh, it's actually so, so good. Wow, it's like, so, so good. Okay, so um, now we're gonna be making some pizza. I have the ingredients right here in front of me. We're gonna be using um, bread flour because I have very little all-purpose flour left, so that's what, where we're at. This is a half cup of one full cup of bread flour here. Great. Then we're gonna want some basic bread slash baking basics. <laughs> Yeast, sugar, salt. Let's do two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. I have red start after dry yeast here. That's pretty much what, like, it's like the popular one right now, so it's like whatever, everyone uses it. And it's like very reasonably priced considering the amount of stuff you get out of it. Two and a quarter teaspoons. One. Two. And I did it a little bit, which is basically a quarter. Oh, that's like. Those last little bits didn't do anything, but so. All right, so we got a cup of flour, some yeast. Um, we want one and a half teaspoons of sugar. Let me go ahead and put this black bread flour, all purpose flour. Anyway, sugar. One and a half teaspoons. One. And a half. Keep your yeast in a dark, dry place, naturally. We want three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. One. Two. That was a half and a quarter. Sugar, salt, yeast, flour in a bowl. And add garlic powder and dried basil at this point as well if you're into it. And you know what? I am into it. I am a maximalist. So I am going to do those things. Dried basil. I actually don't have garlic powder, right? Do I not have garlic powder? I really think that's something I would have. Grab coriander, allspice, dill weed, cumin. No. Tablespoon of, of dried basil. Now the fun thing is that this pizza, this is the crust, right? This pizza is going to be um, basil, mozzarella, pepperoni, green pepper. Maybe not even the green pepper actually. Anyways, so we mix our dried ingredients. Now we want olive oil and warm water. We're going to do about two tablespoons of olive oil. 
which is actually quite a lot of oil, huh? One, two, and we're gonna want warm water. Now the main thing with water when you're doing bread is you want it to be lukewarm to activate the yeast, but not too hot that it will kill the yeast. So it should be between 90 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So what I usually do for that is I um, take a measuring cup of room temperature water, uh, about like uh, three half to three quarters of what I'll need, and I slowly add boiling water to it to like get to the right temperature. Um, while this water boils, which will take about 30 seconds, I'm gonna drink more of this amazing smoothie. Mm. It's so fucking good. All right, also these cookies are dangerously good. I don't like macadamia nuts, but when they are in cookies, they are amazing. So that is really something, let me tell you. So now I'm gonna get a wooden spoon uh, I've already used multiple wooden spoons today, so let me see what else I have. Oh, I have this thing, which is specifically for baking, right? Do I use, is this a thing I can use right now? What is this, what is this for? This is like a salad tie, I don't want this. I call this the annex, it's where I put a bunch of dumb stuff. I guess I could use this slotted spoon. Ugh. Yeah, look at all this junk. Okay, I don't need the salad on thing. I'm gonna try this. I like this blue one, it's very blue. Ooh, it's kind of a spoon, actually. Is it still a teaspoon. spoon? All right, I'm gonna clean these two and see. We'll do the trick. I used all my other spoons already, you know? <laughs> Dead. All right. Here's my used cups. Here's my this stuff. I mean, I guess I can just wash that wooden spoon that's carrying right now. I've been washing stuff anyways. Yeah. So let's see how this, how this fares. Amazing. Now, here's this dry spoon. And next step is how much water do we want? Um, warm water, warm water, three quarters of a cup. So I'm going to put. How much water I need in there. Um, I actually put more than I need in there because um, it's easier to control the temperature uh, when you have more water. If you just have like a little bit of water and you add like five drops of boiling water and then it like goes up 30 degrees, it's like super annoying. So I put a, a decent amount of water in there that's easier to get to the right temperature and then I just dump out, because then it all becomes homogenous, right? So then I just dump out the water that I, um, I just dump out the water to the amount that I need it to be. And then, you know, voila. Warm water, got to be like 100, 110 degrees. This is 105, so this is perfect. Great. Now we want three quarters of a cup, so I'm gonna Dump out till we get three quarters of a cup, it's slightly more. And that's basically perfect. Okay. Cool. Look at this weird spoon. This silicon spatula type of thing.
Oh, it's actually working really well. It's got like a scraping type of property with the walls. That and I guess there's oil in the, in the bread, so. Okay. So we did that. Add olive oil and warm water. Use a wooden spoon to stir very well. I'm using a whatever this is, so F you. Um, then gradually add another cup of flour until the dough forms a cohesive something. Okay. Well, it's looking really lumpy right now. It's looking kind of gross, but it was looking pretty good before I added this last batch of water. Yeah, okay. So these like silicon utensils are definitely the way to go for bowl mixing for now and no more wooden spoons. Okay, let's add another cup of flour. Again, we're using bread flour. We can use all purpose flour as well. Those cookies are staring at me. They look so freaking good. Oh my God. Okay, you want to add this in gradually. Cool. So now mixing, oops. Now we're mixing. It smells doughy, that's for sure. Okay, we're getting there. Woo! This stuff takes some time and some strength. It's 80 degrees in here. I don't know if you know, but it is hot, hot, hot. I went out today to go to the grocery store and that was it. <laughs> sure is gonna come over in a little bit and we're gonna put up the yurt, which I'm super excited about. Finally, I can get the bed out of my office and have my workout space back, which will be Amazing. I really do like my apartment. Unfortunately, I can't afford it anymore. So I gotta, I gotta go. Um, which is a shame because I like it. But I think I'll like the next place a lot too. Right? I know, right? Or else am I going to find this much kitchen storage as well as no adjoining walls? There are no neighbors on any of my adjoining walls. Upstairs, downstairs, yes, but it's like four feet of concrete. I've almost never heard them. So that's pretty awesome. Though I can hear the elevator from here, which is a bit of a problem. Um, it's not really a real problem. It just is a you know, thing. And I have noise, noise isolation weathering strips that I can put onto the door. But I haven't because I was like, well, I'm going to move out in a second anyways. But... I should have just put them on, right? <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm going to take a quick break because my arm is hurting from all of this stirring. That's why people have stand mixers, right? 
I always say this. I do want a stand mixer. Red, am I right? Woo, yeast is amazing. So, there is this thing. There's a lot. <laughs> That's how I start every story. So, um, in the 1600s in Germany, they started to have rules and regulations. And some people were selling a lot of beer and they wanted to be able to make sure that you could, you know, sell beer of a, a certain quality from place to place. They enacted these set of laws on, on beer, requiring them to be manufactured in a certain way, manufactured, made in a certain way. Um, they went by the now not so you know great name of the German purity laws, Ooh. and they basically said that proper beer would only be classified as beer if they if it had uh, three ingredients, only three ingredients. That's water, hops, and barley. Um, anything else would cause it, uh, would, would make it a, um, not beer, not be able to be like taxed as beer or like sold as beer or whatever the fuck it was, I don't know, right? And so the problem is back in the 1600s, they didn't know about yeast. They didn't know what yeast was basically. And people, the way that it worked is they would stir their beer, their beer vats at a specific point with a family beer stirring stick. And this family beer stirring stick would just like hang on the wall and it would itself actually be covered in the yeast. And so it would like be indoctrinated and ferment and like when you'd stir it, the yeast would get into the thing and then you'd have actually fermented beer. But because of this uh, Germany purity law shit, people were unable to use their family, their family sticks. I actually don't understand that part. I don't know why they couldn't use their family sticks, but. This is the first time I'm telling the story out loud while doing something else, and I've just now realized that there's like a logical flaw in it. Okay, so people stopped using their stirring sticks because these German purity laws, and that basically meant that there was no yeast in the beer during the fermentation process, and the beer started being non-alcoholic. So for like a while, they were selling non-alcoholic beer. There was no booze in Germany. Everyone was, it was a dry, it was a dry year or something, a dry few years, because Nobody knew what the fuck yeast was, and they're like, why doesn't our beer get us drunk anymore? Which I thought was really funny and crazy. Um, there's more to this, and I don't know it, and I don't understand it, because it's really hard to talk and do a thing at the same time. So, I don't know how all these cooking show people do it, because it's tricky. All right, so we've just added the last of our flour. I am stirring this shaggy mass. We've incorporated more or less all of this flour. Ah, whew. You know, I think this is more effort than usual because the silicon, the silicon tip, it bends when I push it. So I have to put more force on it to get it to actually do the thing I need to do, which is, I guess, its downside. Great for scraping sides, not really great for mixing. Whatever, I'm not going to switch now at the last moment. <laughs> have ourselves some dough. We got ourselves a shaggy mass. All right. Yeah, this is some nice feeling dough. It's way softer than the bread dough that I was using. I mean, than like the other dough because of the olive oil, I think. Yeah. Cool. I think I picked up all of the remaining flour. And now, now we've got it. Okay.
Do a little separate large clean bowl, generously with olive oil, and use a pastry brush to brush up the sides of the bowl. Lightly dust your hands with flour and form a pizza dough into a round ball and transfer to your olive oil brush bowl. Use your hands to roll the pizza dough along the inside of the bowl until it's coated with olive oil, then cover the bowl lightly with plastic wrap and place it in a warm place. Okay, so I'm gonna use the same bowl because, you know, whatever. I don't know why I want a different bowl. And go ahead and do this. And scrape away anything remaining. Then we're gonna have to say olive oil. Okay. Okay, I'm not gonna use a pastry brush, I'm gonna use my hands. Good. I had two with milk. Well, I had one with milk, and then I couldn't help myself, and I had a second one. It's just kind of amazing. Oops, I used dish soap instead of hand soap. Might be. Coffee crash and all. All right. So, what do we do? We took flour, yeast, salt, sugar, olive oil, and warm water, mixed them together, made a shaggy mass dough. Then, now I'm going to dust my hands with flour lightly. They're still a little wet, so actually, huh? Pour the pizza dough into a round ball. This could do with just a slight bit more. Sugar, maybe. Sorry, not sugar, uh, flour. But we're not going to worry about it, actually. All right. Now we have our round ball. We are going to What I'm doing is I'm just coating the end of the, uh, the outside of the bowl with the olive oil and forming the two a circle. Okay, so here's our little bit of dough. And now we're gonna let it sit. In a warm place, tightly covered. Cool, I'm gonna grab some cleaner, try to cover it, and then we're gonna give it maybe like an hour or two. And in that hour or two, I'm gonna do all the other stuff I was supposed to do today, rather than just fucking baking. But um, I'm really excited about this pizza. It is gonna have fresh basil leaves on it. It's gonna have locally sourced fresh mozzarella. I am gonna put uh, cheddar on it, pepperoni, um, maybe green peppers, maybe not green peppers. And the question is, what will I do with this tomato sauce? Um, I'll try to figure out the tomato sauce, because maybe I'll do some other type of sauce. But we're gonna co coat this and then wait for it to roughly double in size. Double, huh? Q. Let's see how this goes. Boom. Bam.
Cool. Um, I will see you later. We're gonna come back and finish this up. Take care.